Hi, I'm Lee. Welcome back to the channel Fix It for Reselling. Today on the desk we have a handy cam. It's just a Practica. Full HD though, 1080p, 24 megapixels. Picked this up at a garage sale. Um, the lady wanted £8 for it. Had the battery in it, no memory card. Uh, she wanted £8. I think... Um, I think I'd offered her five, but I can't remember. But I asked her if she had a charger, and she said no. It's just like, um, just like the normal micro uh, USB. And I was like, oh yeah, that one's okay. That's okay. But I didn't look at it close enough. Come on, focus. But yeah, that is absolutely mangled in there. We turn it around straight. Hopefully, you can see it's like smashed and bent to bits and obviously that will not charge so let's see if we can get this apart have a look in there and see if we can fix this right so i think when i looked these up online they are worth over 100 pounds um but this was one we wanted to keep just so uh the missus doesn't keep nicking this camera when she wants to do a bit of filming of bits and bobs. But yeah, so it's probably worth a decent amount. I don't know what it's, I don't know what it's resale value is. I can't get this battery to ping out. Maybe the battery's knackered, who knows. Is that swollen? I'm not sure whether that's slightly swollen. If it is, it's not by much. Right, so obviously this wouldn't turn on when we got it. But let's have a look at the battery. See if we've got any voltage in there. We've got our plus on the left and our minus. If it's got voltage and the um, camera won't turn on, the camera, camera's probably knackered. Right, DC voltage. Plus and minus. Yeah, that is dodo. Zero point two millivolts. Rubbish. So yeah, that's been dead, and that's been dead for a long time. Well, we'll leave that out for now. Right, so how easy? is this to get into. There are a couple of uh, crosshead screws on there. Don't tell me it's as simple as um, popping these off. I can tell you now it won't be that simple. I hope it is, but I bet it's not. It is sliding out though. Now it does just slide out there, but yeah. And there's no way you can get in there to change that. But you can see more of what it's uh what it's like in there. Yeah. How do you do that to a port? Yeah, and that's not even that's not even connected. That could have like ripped pads out. That is just like flapping around in the wind. Oh, so I got the zoom out. So yeah, there was just one screw in the side of here and two screws down the bottom. And yeah, I'm just putting them down there. They're all the same size, but. There's anything under these little rubber pads or not? Not too worried about messing this up because we're keeping it. So yeah, there's screws under this. Under these little pads. Hidden screws. Yep. 
you gotta love a hidden screw. So yeah, hidden screws under all of them. All the same size. Alright, now what happens now? Does this pop off of here? It would be too easy. Can't see any other screws anywhere. So just get behind this panel, this pops out. Any wires connected. Got a speaker wire in there. So, not sure if we can just pop this little speaker out because we can't. Oh. Can't see a connector down here. Is that solder to the board? I think that's solder to the board. So, hopefully, this little speaker will just pop out yeah it's just held in by a bit of glue just pop a bit of tape off of there yeah let's lift this lift this little bar up We're going to have to get the board out. Use your thumb. Lifts that, slide that out. Right, so that's the monitor and everything out of there. Right, so now we've got to work out if we can get this board out of here. Can we just uh, get away with undoing a couple of screws to pull this board out? I very much doubt it. Really, you would think that would come come apart in two halves. So we can undo those two couple of screws, but I don't think I'm going to get the board out through under there. There's all these little tabs that are sticking out. I don't think that's... The board will come out. It's bound to be stuck to something else. There's bound to be other connectors and stuff under it. I'll keep these two screws separate from the rest. I don't know where they go. And yeah, that's not really released anything. That's not going anywhere. They're actually ready to fall out of there. Yeah. <laughs> It's just come clean off the board. That was just that is just loose in there. <sighs> Stick this back down. Get stuck everywhere. So I'm thinking this should I think this should pop a half pop apart in two halves but 
out. I do not know. I mean, it's out of the kind of like bezel, it's out of the cover spinning. It's not spinning the lens, but just that outer bit is. But that's not going to come off of there, is it? And you have got the join there, so that might have to come off somehow. So it was at this point that I gave up and just thought, right, I'm going to heat this uh, front sort of cover up, be a bit more destructive. It doesn't matter if I damage it, but it worked out. Got the front bezel off, more screws underneath that. And uh, yeah, then we just managed to get the front apart. And as you'll see in a minute, it does come apart in two halves. Like I said, it's just getting that front bezel off, heat it up, soften the glue. And you're going to damage it a bit, peeling it off, but we get it off in the end. Right, so that's a destructive way of getting into it anyway. So I think the easiest way to get that apart, probably, was to heat that ring up to get it out of there. Then underneath there's, there's the four screws that you, you can then pull that cover off and then you can pull that ring out. And then it will come out easier. I mean, digging in at the sides, you can probably see it's got all these little clips in there that are hooking into all these little holes. So that one I've destroyed, pulled apart. But yeah, I mean, it does say in the manual there is no serviceable parts in this and do not take it apart. But there is serviceable parts. There's a battery for starters. All these components you can change. And you can change the ports. So there are serviceable parts. Make it a bit easier to get open. I probably have scratched this um, light pipe up a bit on the end there. Oop. So at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the lens there, you've got the, probably the light the light sensor. So uh, yeah, although that was covered. Well, it looked like it was covered by a bit of plastic. It's not, though, is it? No, it's not covered by plastic. It just looked black through that hole because obviously it's all black inside there. All right, so that's the fun part of that. We can take this, um, undo these LEDs off the front of here just to get rid of this top part all together all right so now we need to pop our get, get a board out of there speaker keeps sticking to magnets Nice chunk of lead in there. Just put just put a bit of metal in there to give it, you know, a bit of weight. Make it that makes it feel quality by adding weight. <laughs> Alright, so we'll undo these screws on the top because that board is going to be attached to that board, I would imagine. Losing track of all my screws, but I think they're all pretty much the same. Same size. Is that going to come off there, or do I need to do that one as well? Might have to do that one as well. Bloody tiny things. 
Oh no, I've got shakes. Right, this should now pop out. That should be... The lens is going to be connected with a ribbon cable in there. Right. Let's see if we can detach this all from the frame. Screw at the front. Hoping these are just holding the lens in. Come on, get out of there. And there's one just down at the back, right down the bottom. So that's all now coming out. This is going to be fun getting it back in, isn't it? Is that going to slide out of there? Doesn't look like the record button's going to come out. Would have thought that would just slide up, but it's not. I bet it's, it's got. I bet it's got a bloody screw down the bottom somewhere that you can't even get into. What the? What the? What the? Right, get off that magnet, you! Get off that magnet! Really, I'm only interested in this board. That speaker or whatever is driving me nuts. Oh, this board's connected to the front down here. It's like, all I want to do is flip that over and get to this connector. Sod it, that'll do. Ribbon cables are alright, that's not going to affect me. We get down to our USB now anyway, we can test stuff. Right, so there we go. There is our uh, pins on our USB. Where have I put that USB? There it is. Yeah, you see how mangled that is? They have just basically been ripped out of the board. I mean, that's, that's a good job to rip, rip them off all the ground pads. Those four tabs on the side, are soldered on there, that's um, a very crappy solder on there. Oh, they've done a good job of trying to wedge a wire in here and just rip it off. But look how bent it is. All, it's all bent up. Look at the state of it. Right, so just to test this, we're going to take an old USB cable. This one's just like a really short lead that I never use. So I'm just going to... Cut off the uh, micro USB end. Probably going to leave this quite short actually. I could change the port, but I probably haven't got one that fits it. But this is another way you can use it. I mean, the, the camera I'm using at the moment has one of these coming out of it. That I can just plug straight into the computer or plug into an extension lead. So it's just the same as having a USB port, but it's not going to get damaged. Obviously, if I was going to keep it on here, I'd have to stick that through the hull and stick a knot this side so you can pull it back through and pull it off the board again. But I'm just going to stick this on just to test it now. I don't even know if this works or even turns on. So, strip these wires back a bit. Is this a data cable? No. That's rubbish. That's just a, well, this is just a power cable. Damn it, that'll do. Just a power cable will do. Let's just strip them back a bit. Should have warmed the soldering iron up so I can tin them. 
Right. Bit of shoulder just on the end of the wires. Have you heated up enough yet? Give the tip a clean. Butterfingers. That'll do. Send you back down on here. Just gonna make sure we've got some solder on here. I don't know whether the pins have been snapped off in here or what. Just clean these up a bit. So just gently, gently rub some solder over to clean them up. Um, solder wick, solder wick. Oh, got out of shot a bit. Right, let's warm them up and use a bit of solder wick just to get all that solder off now. Clean the pads. That will do. Now I'm just going to put some fresh solder on there again. So not too much like that. They're being bridged now. So clean the iron, bit of flux on the tip, then I'm thinking I think I'm right with the pin out, pin outs. The negative is on the right. I don't want these to be bridged. I don't want them in the other traces. These are quite chunky wires, really. Come out of it, probably gonna get the head in the way again. Motion detected at the front door. Bloody ring doorbell. Right, they are on there, they're not bridging. Not the best picture in the world. With the lights and everything. There, you can see it's nowhere near the three pins in the middle. Hopefully I've got that round the right way. So now shall we connect the boards up? See what happens. So now does, that's our display and our power button's on the top one here, so which will be that button. Right, let's get an external battery and plug it in. All right, got the portable battery with the amp meter on it. Let's just plug it in, make sure nothing goes pop. Make sure that stays on five volts. Six amps, seven amps, 0.16. Yeah, it's turned on. Screen's on. Hello, hello. Ooh, what's wrong with that picture? Or is it just the angle mat? Oh no, there's something. I've oh, probably just got a bad connection or it's blocking some lens, blocking something. 
Yeah, that looks alright, it's turning on, it's my fingers. Hello, hello, hello. 20.34 amps, so there we go, now it's working. It's like I say, you could leave it, you could leave it with that wired on there, and you could plug that straight into, you know, a battery or into your computer to charge it, although this one only got data on it, um, but I don't know whether it's it's going to feed data through there or whether you need to take the memory card out. Usually you can read the data from the memory card through the cable. Uh, so I could change that. Or I could find a USB mini port that will fit on there. I'm not sure. I don't think I've got anything laying around at the minute though. I can change the port on. If I've got anything I can destroy. Right, found an old TomTom -tom that was trying to fix before that had a damaged port as well, but changing the port didn't work on it, so I shall borrow this one now. Sod fixing the TomTom -tom ain't worth much. Heat it from the top, and hopefully the port just drops out without melting any of it. And off she pops. Move that. Chuck that rubbish. Spare parts. Right, so these two are very, very similar. Very similar, if not identical. Got your four legs either side there, five pins. I mean, it has even got that thing on the back there, which I actually took off. Well, I lifted that up there so I could hand solder the uh, the pins onto the um, that other board on the TomTom. -tom. So I didn't want to heat it up and melt all the plastic. So yeah, that's the same one that'll do. Naughty boy. So that's looking all right. Let's give that a quick clean up. So I see it a bit better. Bit of IPA. Get rid of that flux, and you can see that I've bridged the uh, contacts. So they're unbridged. Just sort out these ground pads. Where's my bloody tweezers gone? Right in front of my eyes. Right, we clean up these ground pads. But I'm doing this so cack handed. Where's that leaded solder gone? Right. Get some leaded solder on these ground pins. Just so I can clean them off again. Right now, to get this port back on, I'm going to have to hang it off the edge of the desk. Just going to touch up these ground pads with a little bit of solder. Because the ones this side, I'm not going to be able to get into there with a uh, 
soldering iron afterwards. Right, we're going to get a hot air on. Got it set to 430 degrees. We're just going to heat this up from the bottom till the solder mounts. Going to get ready with our port. Probably going to get my head in the way a lot. So we're just going to heat up from underneath so we're not melting any of the plastics or damaging these ports. If I blow from the top, it could be starting to melt plastics in here. So we're going to come from underneath. Just going to wait until our solder melts. So our solder is melting now. So let's just drop this port on. And that bit of metal is going to get in the way, isn't it? Right, let's try that again. Bent that, um, that part back over now. So it's out of the way. It was catching on that metal bit. Let's try again. So solder starting to melt. Let's try and drop this into place. Try and see where the pins are, make sure they're lined up. I'm just going to push down gently. Move the heat away. Hopefully that is soldered on. Right, so we're just giving it a quick reflow. Let's try and get this on the first pin. I've just like nudged it over so it's slightly better in position. It was a little bit off. Right, so I'm just touching the outer case in there to make sure I'm not touching the ground when I shove this in. There we go, we've got pin one on. Got pin two, not touching the case. Pin three, I'm not touching the case. Pin four, I'm not touching the case. And pin five, which is ground anyway. Right, all the pins are on. So for now, right, let's get this all back together if I can remember how. This will be fun.
Right, so this wasn't drawing any amps. I've plugged it in now again. Um, just come back to have another look at it because just to see if there was anything wrong with it. And because I had shut the door, I now open it and now the amps go up 0.4 amps and it turns on. So it is working. So I think before, because I just had the uh, display open and plugged it in, I don't think that turned it on. And I don't even think I tried the power button. So the power button works on the side there. Turns it on and off. And yeah, our zoom and stuff still works. The, the screen isn't the, isn't the greatest. I mean, it doesn't look in focus or or anything. It looks awful. Crap screen. I think it's probably just the resolution of it. Probably hard to come across. But yeah, it's all touch screen and that. But I mean, look at that. I mean, the text on that is like rubbish. They could have made it a lot better. Oh. Resolution only does 1080p at 30 frames. It's 60 frames a second. It's 720p. So we're on that. Yeah, you've got your auto white balance. So anyway, it's all working. I don't think it's got like a... Um, macro mode or anything mm. Mm. so if you if you press mode you got video camera got all the settings down there format your card the date language silent mode auto off Frequency in Hertz, you can go between 60 and 50. All right, so let's just record a bit of footage on here of my desk and uh, we'll see if anything's in focus. Look, you can see all my junk up here. All right, so here's the battery that came with it. It is a little bit, a little bit expanded. Probably can't see it, but you shouldn't really use expanded batteries, they could explode. But let's put that in there. Let's see if it's going to charge. Charging lights on. Says it's charging. You remember something with, with this as well. Got lights on the front. Right, let me stick a memory card in there. Let's um, try and film something with it. So the next shot you'll, your shots you'll see will be from this. And I might use the sound straight from this as well, rather than using my microphone that I'm wearing. We'll uh, use the sound for that and see what the sound's like. But yeah, it's charging the battery, 0.55 amps. <coughs> I'll keep my eye on that because I don't want that battery sweating and exploding. And there we are, recording. All right, let's do some comparisons. Let's film like a Feel like a board on here, see how close we can get in. This is just where we've took our um, USB port from there. Can't really get very close in with the focus. Let's come out, set and focus. Let's give it a zoom in, see how close we can get before it goes. Yeah, not very far. Now yeah, focus away. That's not brilliant. Let's hold it up to where I need to move the battery. I'm going to hold it up to where my other camera is at the minute, which is that high up. Let's come down and see how much it focuses now. Now it's already gone. A bit shaky. This has only got a 10 times optical zoom out. out there. Yeah, it doesn't like it. Even though I've got a shaky hand holding it up there. Alright, let's do a couple of little pans around. Let's show you the uh, hot air station and soldering iron 2-in-1. 
the Perceiver 8786D hot air and soldering station with my unleaded and leaded solder up there a bit of brass over cleaning stuff but yeah now this is good there's two separate switches at the bottom to turn on your hot air or your soldering iron you can set your temperatures up and down what you want them on and that's it that's your soldering station heating up soldering iron hot air just lift it off starts to blow this is a nice find at the, uh, at the car boot the old um, well, call it a bench power supply or a lap power supply. Some people call them different rings, but you've got your voltage adjusting over here. Only goes up to two amps, I think this one was. Two or three, is it? Oh, two and a half. It's a 30 volts to two and a half. So this is what I can use to inject voltage into stuff and adjust your amperage. You can also test for like short circuits with it. See this picture on here is not looking, looks okay at the minute. Yeah, that's, um, <coughs> that's about it. I'm just in the just in the alcove next to the fireplace with our funky one pound wallpaper on there. Beautiful. So yeah, and then this is what we have. We just have our camera on a tripod all the way up there overhead. So you can see how far that is sort of up off the ground. So that one is zooming in right down onto that board. Let me show you with the other camera. Now I'm going to zoom right in to show you how good the zoom on this is. This has got a 54 times clear image. Right, we're back on the Sony. So I can zoom all the way in like that. And I can see right on that board. Right on that board we were looking at there. Whereas if we go back to the... Uh, if we go back to this Practica. Ooh. You know, we can't get anywhere near close in there. It's just out of focus. Even, even putting it right up where the other camera is. I put it up that high because that's where the best focus is. Yeah, could be with the hands are shaky, but... Well, that's it. That'll do, that's the test. God knows what the sound sounds like. And we're back on the other microphone. We are done, we are finished. That is all fully working. Might need a new battery, but... We'll give this a full test. I think my wife's going to use this one. Stops her nicking this camera when I'm trying to film shit. But yeah, I'll probably get a new battery because yeah, I don't like that that one's expanded. But that's it, and we're done. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, give me a comment, please like, please comment, please subscribe, please share. And um, I think we're going to get a TV out for the next one, the 50 inch Samsung TV with a line down the screen and a, a loose LED. So hit that notification bell, turn your notifications on and see when I upload the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.